So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to look at the basics of the chain rule. So the chain rule says more or less that the derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So whenever we apply this, we need to know which function is f and which function is g, or more generally, which function is the outer function and which one is the inner function. Sometimes it'll be clear, sometimes it won't be. Let's look at an example. Let's set f of x equal to the cube root of 10x minus 5. Now you may say immediately, wait a minute, this f, does this f have anything to do with this f? No. But we use f all the time for functions. And so you should be used to seeing this formulation of the chain rule being applied to functions called f. So you want to think of these two things as the outer and inner functions. Don't necessarily tie them to these letters. So we're going to look for the derivative of f. So you have to find the inner and outer functions. Ah, but the first thing we're doing is, is going to rewrite this thing. We want to rewrite this the way we always rewrite roots when we're differentiating, which is as an exponent. So cube root becomes to the one-third power. Now, what's the outer function here? It's actually written in a way that makes it pretty clear. Raising to the one-third power is the outer function. So something to the one-third is the outer function. What's the inner function? Well, it's everything that's inside. So this, 10x minus 5, is the inner function. So when we differentiate, when we get f prime, we're first going to take the derivative of the outer function. The derivative of something to the one-third is one-third of that something to the one-third minus 1. Right, we apply the power rule here. The, exponent, the old exponent comes down, and the new exponent is 1 third minus 1, or whatever it used to be, minus 1. What goes inside the parentheses is what was in the parentheses before. So we put 10x minus 5. Now we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. 10x minus 5, the derivative of that, is 10. So if we simplify a little bit, we get 10 thirds times the quantity 10x minus 5 to the negative 2 thirds. And that's how we get f prime. Let's look at another example. This time, let's set f of x equal to e to the x squared. Again, we have to split this into two functions. And if you have trouble splitting it into two functions, think about how you would compute this. You compute things from the inside out, sort of an order, order of operations issue. If you were to compute this, you would first figure out x squared, and then you would raise e to whatever that number is. So when you're using the chain rule, you're going to go in the opposite direction. e to something is the outer function. That's where you're going to start. So e to the something, this is the outer function. The inner function is exactly this something, so it's just the x squared. And I'm writing outer and inner here. Once you start doing more of these, you might not need to write these. But it's actually a good thing to do when you're first, uh, when you're first using the chain rule. So what's f prime? f prime of x, derivative of e to the something is just e to the something, right? Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we start with e to the x squared. And then by the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the inner thing. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. So we're done. This is often written 2x e to the x squared, but that's not much of a simplification. Here's the derivative. Let's look at another example. Here's 
Here, let's let f of x be cosine cubed x. Now, it's useful to remember that this is cosine x quantity cubed. So what's the inner and outer function here? Well, written in this way, it's fairly easy to see, just like the first one. This cube is the outer function. Cosine x is the inner one. And again, it's the same thing with this reverse order of operations. If you were going to compute this quantity, you'd first find out what cosine x is, then you would cube it. So when you apply the chain rule, you're going in the opposite direction. First deal with the cube, then with the cosine. So f prime of x is 3 times cosine x quantity squared. That's the part that comes from the derivative of something cubed, where we put the something in these parentheses. And then we multiply by the derivative of whatever's inside here. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And that's it. We could similarly rewrite this one, but I'm not going to bother in this case. Yet another example. Let's say that f of x is 4x minus 1 quantity squared. Once again, our outer function is this power thing. So we have f prime of x is 2 times something to the first power. So I won't write the 1. And this something is 4x minus 1. We multiply that by the derivative of what's inside, which is 4. So this becomes 8 times 4x minus 1, or 32x minus 8. Now, you might be saying, why did we use the chain rule here? You could just as easily, well, maybe not just as easily, have written this as 4x minus 1 times 4x minus 1. Here, you could use the product rule, or you could expand this fully and differentiate it the way you would differentiate any other polynomial. But this process, even when it's just a square, is going to involve more algebra than this process. We didn't really need any here. Let's look at an example where it's pretty unavoidable. So f of x, let's stick with 4x minus 1, but now let's raise it to the 37th power. No way you want to expand this. So here, you don't absolutely need the chain rule, but you sure do want it. This is 37 times 4x minus 1 to the 36th power times 4. And those are some basic applications of the chain rule.